With the enrollment deadline just around the corner, there are still lots of moving parts within the Husker football program. While we wait for the dust to completely settle, many fans have already begun to drown in the Kool-Aid. So, um, hi, I'm Aaron Muller. This is episode 28 of the Cubs Mac podcast. This is a Nebraska football podcast covering the Husker season and team news as it progresses throughout the year. Um, if you enjoy the content, please consider leaving a like and hitting the subscribe button. It helps me reach more ears and helps me spread the podcast. But getting right into it, um, it's been a couple of weeks since I posted an episode. I mentioned in the last episode that I was going to take some time off to spend with the family during the holidays. And I also take the time off to uh, make some fixes to the computer. There were some issues with it. And so I had to, you know, fix those and change some parts around to help kick out episodes going on. So um, while the time off was nice, there's been a ton of things that have happened in the Husker Nation. Um, first and foremost, Tony Tuioti left for Oregon. Uh, as it happens, I released the episode on Monday, and I think it came out like on Thursday that um, he left. He was going to Oregon. I believe he made more money. Um, he's back on the West Coast where he's, you know, that's where he's from. That's where he's used to recruiting. That's kind of like his bread and butter. So um, I was happy for him that he left. Uh, looking at his time here, he has been the defensive line coach since he got here in 2019. He took over for Mike Dawson when Mike Dawson went to the Giants, I believe. Um, but we've seen him kind of grow in that position. And and I've heard people say, like, the, the position has improved drastically under him. I don't know how much that I'm going to put on him as a good coach because he is a good coach. He's He's a solid coach. But I think a lot of that also has to come from the depth that he had at that position, the experience that he had at that position. A lot of those guys, you know, came back as a fifth year uh, senior for this last season. So um, he's obviously a good coach. He, he knows how to get his group ready, but a lot of that has to also be attributed to the fact that he had a lot of veteran guys, senior guys come back and play for him again. Um, he was also known for recruiting the Polynesian pipeline as you know, he has that background. He is Polynesian himself. So um, having that connection has helped us pull in some guys we otherwise might not have. And with him leaving, you kind of wonder if, if that's going to be in flux, if, if that's kind of gone out the window, but uh, with, with Raiola being also Polynesian, hopefully that can be another connection there as well. Um, Initially, as I mentioned, I thought that it was a pretty significant departure. I thought that between his coaching uh, ability, being able to at least maintain, if not slightly improve, the position he was coaching, and uh, the recruiting ability as well. So um, I wondered how that was going to impact the staff that was already dealing with the vacancies from the midseason firings that we dealt with last year. They let the four coaches go on the offensive side of the ball. Um, and they'd filled three of those positions. So with them already still trying to figure out that last position, I was wondering how adding one more vacancy to that group was going to impact it. Um, but as I, I was sitting here thinking about it, like thinking about how things are going to lay out and listening to other people's, you know, ideas of how things could possibly land. Um, I think now that maybe the loss was kind of like, uh, like, like a good thing in the end. Um, it's not ever good to lose a good coach like that, but the loss kind of allowed for other pieces to fall into place where they otherwise might not have. So um, before we only had the one open spot, as I mentioned, and we needed to have a running backs coach for sure, but we wanted to have a dedicated special teams coach as well. So there just wasn't, you know, the availability there to have two different coaches come in and fill in one spot. So with his spot open, um, there's movement possible on defensive side of things. So, um, that would allow for those two free spots if you take his spot and then, you know, the last vacancy that you could have a running backs coach and a dedicated special teams coach. Um, so the, the hypoth or hypothetical there, and this isn't me, I'm not going to say that I, I can't put this possibility. Like I mentioned, I've been listening to other people. I'm um, Adam Carricker, I believe, talked about this. Um, Cobbs, uh, not Cobbs, Matt Corn Crazed also mentioned something along these lines. But if Coach Dawson was to return to his position, um, back of the defensive line where he used to coach. So right now he's in charge of the out, outside linebackers, I believe. Um, but if he goes back and slides into the defensive line position, that would free up um, Coach Rude to take over the entire linebackers, uh, inside and outside linebackers, which would just leave that you know that spot that Tuioti left open um, to be left open for the special teams coach. Um, and it sounds like we kind of already have our guy there. We have somebody on staff that has been the defensive analyst since last February. Um, Bill Bush, he has coached special teams before. He's a defensive guy. He, as I mentioned, he was a defensive analyst. Um, 
but he, aside from being a seasoned coach, he's been a coach for a long time. Um, he's also a top tier recruiter. There's been a lot of talk about, even though he's a defensive guy, he is really able to focus in on really high skill guys. Um, Joe Burrow is going to LSU was almost solely contributed, uh, to Bill Bush being able to bring him in, um, He's just able to bring in high talent guys to uh, certain positions, even though he might not be under that position as the coach. So um, what he's currently doing right now, he's out recruiting for us. So that kind of le leads credence to the idea that he might be uh, the next special teams coach, uh, although he might not be the dedicated special teams coach, which he's never been a dedicated special teams coach anyway. But uh, he, he tends to coach like safeties or cornerbacks, something like that. Um, and then also do the special teams coordination on the side. But under him, even just under that special teams coordination, he seems to get the special teams to uh, a good spot. So either way we run with that, if he's either the dedicated or the, um, you know, if he's a position coach at safety or something and he takes over uh, special teams coordination, I'm okay with that. Um, but that does still leave the one vacancy open that we were dealing with before, and that's the running back group. So uh, Ron, Brown, Ron Brown has helped coach this position. Uh, he finished out the last season with them for the last four games, I believe. Um, and although he has pedigree in that position, he has a lot of experience coaching running backs. Um, recently, with his stint with uh, Bo Pelini's staff, he coached Rex, Burk at, uh, Rex Burkhead and Amir Abdullah most recently. Um, but Frost has mentioned in multiple comments that he would like to keep Coach Brown at kind of as an administration role, um, keep him as an analyst that he can kind of pull from directly and not as a position coach. Um, that makes me believe that he is looking outside the program to bring somebody else in. Um, names like Florida's Greg Knox and former LSU running backs coach Kevin Falk come up. And I don't know how likely those two are, especially Kevin Falk. I, I hear a lot of guys like he's not coming to Nebraska. He's not coming to Nebraska. Um, but Greg Knox coming from Florida, he has a lot of experience coaching running backs in the SEC, which is very similar in play style to the way the Big Ten plays. So, um I'm not sure how likely either one of those guys are coming in, but I'm sure we'll hear soon. I believe the cutoff for early enrollment to be able to do spring ball is the 17th. So um, we got like 10 days, uh, nine days, something like that. So um, other news, we have movement on the roster. There's been a ton of movement between the transfer portal and recruiting um, on that side of things. Uh, most notably, recently this week, we had Texas quarterback tra uh, transfer Casey Thompson committed to the Huskers on Friday. So uh, the experience is what we, exactly what we were looking for going into the transfer portal for the quarterback. A lot of people were worried that we haven't landed a quarterback yet, that, you know, why are we passing up all these guys or why are all these guys going other places? Um, but Casey Thompson seems to be a really good fit for what we needed from a quarterback. He has two years of eligibility left. He has experience. He is from the Big 12. They throw it a lot there, so he, he's good at that. He has a big arm. Um, he is technically mobile, but he's not a dynamic running back or a running uh, quarterback. So he's not going to take off and run on you like Adrian Martinez is, but he might be able to move the pocket. He might be able to stretch a play out and get the first down with his legs. But he really like relies on his arm and uh, between the arm strength and the accuracy, he seems to have all of the tools needed to run in this Mark Whipple offense. So we can do a deeper dive on him specifically and then also how that's going to impact the quarterback room going forward because with him coming in he's most likely going to start next year he's going to be the guy that we're going to probably look forward to start um, and as i mentioned he has two years of eligibility left so for most guys that have three or four years of eligibility left they're going to sit under him and develop while he gets that starting time um, which means that smothers heinrich and possibly chubba purdy we've been hearing a lot of talk of chubba purdy from Florida State. I'm not actually sure where he is down there, but um, he still has four years of eligibility left too. And he's gotten, uh, I believe he just got an offer too from Oklahoma this week. So um, he has a official visit on the 14th. Chubba Purdy does. So all these guys coming in, they're more than likely going to be developing while Casey Thompson gets the start. And I don't know, you're going to have four or five guys in the quarterback's room. I'm not sure how many of those guys are willing to sit there for two years and develop. Um, a lot of those guys are, are especially smothers and I feel bad for him because he sat under Adrian and watched Adrian struggle and then he finally got his time to shine and he did well for all intents and purposes he should be the guy next year but with when you have a guy like Casey Thompson come in with proven results then you know you can't really rely on smothers I'm sure it's going to be open competition but I can't imagine that they talked Casey Thompson into coming to Nebraska 
when he wasn't going to get the starting job. It's almost probably like we guarantee you're going to start next year. That's probably what they had to tell him. Um, I can't imagine he would come here looking for, you know, a competition to see if he's even going to get starting time. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some attrition from from the quarterback's room, specifically Smothers. It sounds like Heinrich kind of fits Mark Whipple's offensive style a little bit more being, you know, relying heavily on arm strength being mobile but not taking off. Smothers seems to, that's the thing he struggles with. He struggles with those deep balls, those accurate passes, the consistency on the passing side of things, although he's able to take off and run with you. Um, he is an option quarterback. That's kind of what he does. We haven't got to see a whole lot of film with him throwing the ball, but I, I imagine if somebody does want to leave, it would be Smothers, and it seems very similar to um, losing Noah Vedral to Rutgers. It's very similar where he sat... And he waited, and he finally got a time, and he just never got the starting position. So um, he's going to transfer somewhere probably, if I had to guess, Smothers is probably going to be looking if he doesn't get the starting time next year. Um, another notable uh, transfer that we got from LSU, another one is Trey Palmer. So he comes in as a wide receiver, but more notably, he was known as a quality like return man for LSU. Uh, we struggled, as everybody knows, we struggled with returns last year, and his return numbers look you know, very, very good. Uh, on top of that, his wide receiver numbers, he kind of had like a start to a breakout year next year, but under Mickey Joseph coming here, which Mickey Joseph being here has already paid its dividends. He's recruiting guys, both transferring from LSU, but he's also recruiting big guys that know what he's able to do with wide receiver talent. And so a lot of guys are coming here knowing that he's going to be able to make them better wide receivers. I believe Trey Palmer's in that group. Yes, he's a return man. Yes, he's probably going to be your return specialist next year, but... I think he, he's hoping that he can develop into a better wide receiver and make it into the NFL there. So we pulled him in. We also pulled in a couple offensive linemen. So we have Northern Colorado transfer Kevin Williams and Oklahoma State transfer Hunter Anthony. Williams comes in at 6'5", 330 pounds. He is an Omaha North grad, so he's just coming back home to play. He's played both tackle and guard. Uh, Oklahoma State uh, transfer Hunter Anthony, as I mentioned, he's 6'7", at 330 pounds. So they're very similar in size. Um, and he has also played tackle and guard, although he started at the right tackle for Oklahoma State in the 20 season before he got injured. And then when he did come back last year, he played in a ton of games. He didn't start, but he kind of came in as a jumbo blocking tight end. I don't know if that's because their scheme changed or what. So I, I'm kind of a little wary on Hunter Anthony um, if that injury kind of impacted him to where he wasn't able to play offensive line as well. Or if they kind of just changed their scheme and he got moved to a, you know, a jumbo tight end. So. Um, either way, they both have experience coming in. They both have two years, I believe, left on their eligibility. So they're going to come in and they're going to find a role. We'll talk a little bit more about the offensive line in, in future episodes about how currently it's kind of in flux. And I hope that we can figure something out as far as where everybody's going to land on the offensive line. We just need to find the best five guys for the line to begin with. And having guys come in with experience is a good place to start. Um, there's also other like big recruiting wins for Nebraska as well. Um, Dakota Crawford, he's a former LSU commit as well. He coming out of high school next year, he's the top in the top 80 wide receivers in the country, but he's in like the top 20 wide receivers out of Louisiana. Um, and as I mentioned in previous episodes as well, Louisiana has more NFL talent come out of that state than any other state. So, I mean, if you can pull a lot of high quality guys out of Louisiana, you're, you're in a good place to start. And luckily for us, Mickey Joseph recruits Louisiana very well. So, uh, DeColdis Crawford, aside from having the coolest name on the team, he signed with Nebraska, so he's no longer committed to LSU. He's coming to Nebraska. He's going to be, you know, a big talent for us from the looks of it. He's probably not going to get a ton of starting time next year. He might be in that rotation to come in and make big plays, um, but I fully expect him to develop really well next year. Um, there's many others, as I mentioned. I'd, I'd mentioned, too, that we weren't so much focused on high school recruits this year. We did pull a lot of high school recruits, but a lot of people are concerned that, you know, our rank isn't high on the recruiting number. We're, like, not top 20 like we have been with Scott Frost. And I mentioned, like, uh, there's a reason for that. We're not recruiting high school as much because next year is a, you know, a succeed or bust type of season it's success or or frost is gone so he's looking at the transfer portal more than he's looking at high schools next year um while developing guys is important next year is all about results and you can't get results with new guys typically speaking um i still expect that the huskers are going to be looking for a running back in the portal somebody with experience as well somebody with proven results um and that will likely hinge on the running backs coach being officially named 
We, like I mentioned, we have a bunch of guys that could possibly come in and fill that role. Ron Brown still in the mix as much as Frost has made comments that he doesn't want to keep him there. Um, but until we know for sure who the running backs coach is, I can't imagine that we'll be able to convince anybody to come here and play running back, especially, you know, we have a lot of other issues. Of, we'll get into that as well. There's a lot of moving parts and there's a lot of question marks still on this program. Um, but Husker hype is once again building in the offseason. The roster additions Frost and company have been assembling this offseason already has the fan base excited. There's a lot of quarterback wide receiver combos that are looking better every day with, you know, we landed the five star former wide receiver that I mentioned for the return specialist. We have another LSU wide receiver. We have Omar Manning, who is going to be, I hope Omar Manning and Xavier Betts are going to develop really well next year. I can see them really taking off next year under good guidance from Mickey Joseph. Um, but there's tons of talent. There's potential for explosive offense between them and Casey Thompson coming in at the helm there. Um, the offensive line transfers with experience to patch up the young struggling offensive line that we had last year, especially with Cam Jorgens leaving. Um, possibly maybe even having a special teams coach, maybe possibly even. Um, but the Husker fans are single-handedly causing a Kool-Aid shortage in Nebraska. Um, I mean, I, there's reason for excitement, but I think we need to pump the brakes a little bit. I mean, if you look on Twitter, everybody's hyped every single, like all the news that comes out every time about a new guy transferring to Nebraska, a new guy looking at Nebraska, official visit from Nebraska. Um, there's the reason to be happy because you don't, you wouldn't imagine a team that got three wins last year, getting a bunch of eyes on them. And yet here we are with a bunch of guys coming in that you wouldn't expect to come to a losing program. And while that's a good thing, while I believe that having eyes on us, having these talent uh, positions come play for Nebraska, I think we need to pump the brakes a little bit because there's still, it's kind of like, it's like a mad scientist experiment we have going on with Frost right now where he's brought in theoretically a bunch of guys that will work well, but we haven't actually seen how they're going to work together yet. So, you know, I was going to make a cake metaphor but i can't think of one off the top of my head so yeah we'll just skip it um coaching staff uh as i mentioned the coaching staff hasn't really been through the fire of a season yet they they all theoretically should be good at their positions but until we get into the season until we get into spring ball to begin with we don't know how they're going to work with each other well we don't know how well whipple's offense and frost's offense and mickey joseph's addition to that wide receiver room um, how all three of those offensive minds are going to meld together, if at all. I, I assume that they will work well together just because the kind of like your job's on the line at that point for Frost, so he has to find a way to make that work. Um, but it's not just the coaches. The players also haven't built solid chemistry with each other yet, especially all these talented wide receivers coming in with Casey Thompson, who's coming here, you know, right before spring ball. He has to learn that playbook. All of them have to learn the playbook and a playbook that's brand new to everybody. So everybody has to learn a new playbook and then hopefully these guys can click. Um, most importantly to me, because I like to drive home the importance of the offensive line. Nobody knows where anybody's going to play next year. You don't know who's going to be snapping the ball every down. You don't know who's going to be on the left tackle position. You have guys that can do all the roles. They've, they've mentioned New Ely can play center. Ben Hart can play center. Um, there's like three or four guys that can play center, but they haven't nailed one down yet because they don't know where everybody else is going to start. So there's just, I mean, maybe I'm just being a pessimist here for good reason, because we haven't had success. We haven't seen anything to lend me to believe that this is all going to work in one off season, but I'm not saying don't drink the Kool-Aid. I am finding myself more hyped every day. I'm just saying maybe, maybe you know, slow down a little bit, <laughs> maybe, uh, you know, I don't know, go for it, but please just like drink responsibly. I feel like an alcohol ad, you know, just drink responsibly. Um, drink the Kool-Aid. It's fine. It's fine to be excited for your program, but I feel like you should also hinder your expectations to not be blown out of proportion. But then here I am thinking, you know, I don't want to say we couldn't, you know, potentially win the West West. We can win the Big Ten next year. <laughs> no big deal. Um, but that's going to wrap up this week's episode. So uh, this was a return, return episode, as I mentioned. I was off for the holidays, but I hope everybody is having a great start to the new year. If you enjoyed the episode, please consider uh, liking the video, but more importantly, leaving a comment for me below. 
Um, I'm always looking to interact with more Husker fans, and I'm always open to topics to cover in future videos. So if you have a point in my video that you don't agree with, let me know. If you have something else you'd like me to cover, let me know. Just anything, any comments you have for me down below, it helps me improve the videos. It helps me reach more ears. It helps me produce better content. So um, if otherwise, if you don't want to leave comments below, you can find me on Twitter at Pod. But until next time, go Big Red. Go Big Red.